Okay, so creating an Amazon API is really easy. Uh, you log into your uh, AWS console, and under services, you can select um, you can select API Gateway, and that'll bring you to this screen here. When you create an API, uh, you just give it a name, and you can give it a description if you want. Uh, this the API actually really is your backend. So we do a lot of stuff in Rails, uh, and, and we define models and and controllers. This uh, this is how we do it in Amazon API. So you create a resource right here at the top, and this is this is essentially like your model if, if we're going down that line of thinking. Um, and then once you create a resource. Uh, it, comes, it shows up here in your list of resources, and you can link these resources to data uh, that, like, uh, like that comes from S3 or f from other places. Um, but what I think we're interested in is here is the methods that we can create for these resources. Uh, each of these, for each resource, you can create a method uh, for one of these methods, right? And then once you have the method set up, you can choose. Um, what we do is we use Lambda, which I have over here. And creating a Lambda function is really easy. Yeah, you can skip that. It, can, it gives you like templates. Uh, get hello world, so we'll call this. Uh, the world. And you can do it in either Java or Node, but we do Node because we're cool. And uh, you can write your code right here, and you can you can really write anything. It, it'll just execute it as a whole script. So you can do wow, there we go. Setting up, you know, just a log statement or whatever. And then Amazon has a special handler um, for every lambda function you need to do uh, like this. And this gets an event and a context the variables passed in. And then this context object has a function called done. And the first parameter, I'm not actually sure what the first parameter is. It's usually passed in as null. Uh, but the second one is the JSON that you want to respond with. And so here is where you would you know, link up with your, with your resource and respond with data from your resource or whatever. Um, but for this case, we're just going to do something like this, right? So anyways, this is, this is a really basic example of creating a Lambda function. And then you can, uh, so you click Next here. You have to create a role. Uh, this is kind of a longer process, and so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through it. But the Amazon, there's a tutorial uh, that you can go through to to, to create a role, uh, and basically it just it just gives you it gives you permissions to access resources from your from like S three or, or from the Amazon API gateway. And this is this is the resource that I created when I was setting this up. So the role I created. And so other all of these other things you don't really need to set. Like you could choose like the max amount of memory that you want it to use. And the timeout, not one second, let's just make that like 10 seconds maybe. Because uh, these kind of things affect the price. Uh, although, like, especially for something this small, it's not really going to matter. But, like, Amazon, their estimates is that, like, a million requests to your API will cost you, like, $20 a month. So it's not really that expensive. And so once you've done that, you can check everything off. Oop, I zoomed in and then just create your function. And here you can test it, and it'll tell you what your function would return right here. So we can see that our Amazon, our Lambda function worked really well, because we got hello world back as JSON. And now that we've created this, we can link this to our, uh, to our, uh, our resource here in our API. So you just type the name of the function that you've created in Lambda, yeah, hello world. It'll autofill it for you. So if you just start typing, it'll give you one. This is one that I'm using for the project that I'm working on right here. That's the one we just created. And then just click save. 
it'll ask you for permissions. This is why you set up the role. And so this is how you say, yeah, I want to be able to let people get resources from this database. Uh, these are some other things you can set up. Like if you need to do cores, uh, you can add your headers right here. Uh, for this, we won't. We're not going to add it right now. Um, also, in integration response, once you've added your headers, under header mappings, there'll be a value here. And what you'll want to put is just, uh, this is what you want to put to do cores. It has a little like asterisks and quotations. That's what you want to put for the value there. That's how you get cores to work in the Amazon API. Once you've set everything up, and we have our, we have our resource here with its get method, uh, we can uh, deploy our API. You just create a stage name. Uh, we'll call this development. Development. And you can give it a description and a deployment description if you'd like. And then you deploy. And it gives you the URL for your application uh, right here. This is the URL uh, to the app. So we can copy and paste that in to like the browser because it's a get request. And then we do our resource. And we call it, what do we call it? Test resource, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, test resource. And so it's just a RESTful API. And then when you do that, it'll go and get it and see we get the JSON object back there with Hello World. And so really, basically, that's how it works. Um, for Lambda, which I think is the most interesting part of this, uh, you don't have to write your code here. You can upload a zip file. So if you need code that's more complicated than just returning a simple JSON object, um, like in our project here, we're doing um, lots of different, we're doing a lot of requests. And so we're using node libraries like SuperAgent um, to kind of make that simpler. Uh, to deploy that, you just zip up all the contents, including your node modules that you're using, into a zip folder. Uh, and then you have, you would only have one JS file in the root of your directory that we get called. So when we zip it up, we also have this global JavaScript file, which goes into Canvas. We wouldn't zip that into it, because that would execute with Lambda, because it'll execute all of the JavaScript files in your root directory, just as executable files. And so you just have one file in your root directory. Um, and because it's Node, it will handle all of the, uh, all of the dependencies here for you. It'll take care of all that. The best way to test this is, um, is to write your logic outside of this exports.handler uh, statement here, and then just run the script as just node in your command line. Because it uses, it, and you want to use node uh, 0 0.10.36 is what Amazon uses. And that's, that's the best way to test it, because then you don't have to deploy, you don't have to upload the zip file, then you have to test it there. And if there's errors, you have to come back and change them and upload it again. That's kind of messy. And it takes a lot of time. So yeah, just write it outside of this exports handler. And you just run node, in this case, index.js in this directory. And it'll execute all the logic for you, make sure you don't have any errors, and make sure that it runs the way it's supposed to. And then you can just stick it in the exports.handler statement there. And it'll do the exact same thing when, Lam when Amazon calls it. Uh, the other important thing to remember is that Amazon, the Amazon API runs asynchronously. So if you make, if you make requests, like a post request or get request in the Amazon API, it will not, um, it won't wait for that to come back before the before it finishes. This statement right here is what tells um, is what tells Lambda that it's finished and to and to respond. And then once this is called, nothing else is going to happen with this. So if you put this somewhere, like if you make your request and then just put this at the bottom outside of your request, this will get called long before your request comes back, and it's not going to appear to do anything. Uh, so if you're making a request, you want to put this statement like in the once the promise comes back. In SuperAgent, it uses this end function. So like in this end function here is where we're going to put this to make sure that all of our API calls have finished uh, before we tell Lambda that we're done. And so that's uh, the Amazon API and Lambda in a nutshell. I guess are there any questions uh, about that? No, I, I think it looks pretty straightforward, so thanks for sharing. Uh, well, actually, one question. When you configure it, you have to use the Amazon console for all the configuration. There's not a, not a way to script that. 
There, yeah, that's a really good question. I'm not sure. I know they have a command line interface for the Amazon API, but I have not played with it at all. So I don't, I don't okay. know how, um, how that works. Okay, just curious. Cool, anything else? I think that's it. So thank cool. you much. Sounds like we're good then.